Harold Washington. Welcome to my office. This is the story of my time as a public servant representing the good people of Illinois. Looking out the window over my shoulder is an image of the Capitol building in Springfield, Illinois, where I served as a state representative and senator in the mid-1960s and 70s. Outside the other window is the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C., where I served as United States Congressman for three years. These positions prepared me for my greatest political challenge ever, unifying the Windy City. When I decided to vacate my position as a U.S. Congressman and run for mayor of the city of Chicago in 1982, let's just say the city was divided on many issues. For one, was the city ready for its first black mayor? Let's take a look back at Chicago when I announced my candidacy for mayor, November 10, 1982, followed by campaign coverage up to the election. I proudly and humbly accept, on behalf of the people of Chicago, the nomination as a Democratic candidate for mayor of Manchester. There are moments in our country's history of which all Americans are thoroughly and profoundly ashamed. One of those moments may be happening now, here in Chicago. When you vote on Tuesday, be sure it's a vote you can be proud of. We're like the Hatfields and the McCoys. We've been fighting so long we forgot what we're fighting for. We've become the joke of the entire country. As I move through this country, a lot of people are looking at this city. They're concerned about this city. They know that this country is in the throes of a conservative reaction with some hate symptoms moving. They're very much concerned. So they look to this city for hope. We emerged as the, as the leader and the, and the winner of the Democratic primary. They thought they saw that hope because we had a reputation here of being admired down in controversy. And so as I moved to this country and talked to this country, people said to me, if Chicago can do it, the nation can do it, and maybe the world can do it. What will I do? I will do nothing, as I've said before, to even remove scar or, or, or make a brace of these scars, but rather pull beyond them and focus upon problems common to all of us in this city, black, white, Catholic, Jew, Muslim, men, women, old and young. That's the issue. We have many, many problems. I've delineated some of those. And if we focus on those problems, place down the question that is that particularly grates us all, and deal with those issues, I think we'll be in the first step. So it's not a question of speeches or of posturing, but of laying out solid programs which people are concerned about and rallying themselves on a coalitional basis, as we have done in this campaign, to resolve those problems. Never, never has there been a turnout of black voters to equal what we're seeing in Chicago today. To the sports laws and constitution of the United States. This is the sixth war, the city's largest. South Side Chicago, 98% black. It was clear and sunny in Chicago today, but one has the impression it wouldn't have made any difference at all in these precincts. In the black community, voting was mandatory. 51st precinct? Okay, your total? Okay. 151, you're running low. Just call back at 2 o'clock. Alderman Eugene Sawyer projects a 90% turnout easily. All but a handful of these votes will be for Harold Washington. The candidate himself seems serene today, said he'd slept like a bird last night and was going to write a book about all this when it's over. What will he call it? Barracudas. <laughs> You want Harold? Well, here's Harold! It was a close race, but on April 12, 1983, history was made when I became the first black mayor of Chicago. Not too bad for the city that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once called the northernmost racist city in America. After my election, the real work began. As a matter of fact, one of the first things that I said as the newly appointed mayor to my staff was, let's go to work. We've got a big job ahead of us and lots of people are dependent on us. Remnants of the old democratic machine and backdoor politics that I fought to eliminate existed in City Hall. But like my campaign slogan, Let's come together for one city. I was ready to work with everyone. 
Unfortunately, it would not be that easy. 29 of the city's 50 aldermen, led by Ed Bedoliak and Ed Burke, fought me at every turn. Known as the Bedoliak 29, they would block my proposals and political appointments. Some members of the 29 openly admitted that they blocked my proposals even when they agreed with them because they claim any good idea of mine would be bad for the city in the long run. This was a difficult time in Chicago. Let's take a look back at some of the issues of my administration and council wards. I move we adjourn. A political firestorm quickly exploded. Council wards. They called the city Beirut on the lake. Mayor Washington clashed with the remnants of the Democratic machine, forever changing the face of Chicago politics. That was a time not long ago. If you said you were Chicago, someone would make the crack. Al Capone, right a tat 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 tat. That was a time when you said Chicago, and someone would respond like a Pavlovian dog, segregation. Or you said Chicago, and people talked about the 1968 riots. I said Chicago was where everyone went who didn't want to be anybody. But now, anywhere in the world you go, Israel, Egypt, Rome, Shanghai, Tokyo, Nairobi, Zimbabwe. You go to any of those places and you say you're from Chicago, you know what they'll say to you? I was hero! That was a real intense time for me in the city of Chicago. The council wars ended in 1986 when a judge ordered some special automatic elections, ruling that the voting boundaries intentionally hurt Chicago's minority communities and city council's representation of the people of Chicago was not fair at the time. Whites and Blacks both accounted for approximately three out of every seven citizens each, with Hispanics accounting for one out of every seven. Yet the city council had 33 Whites, 16 Blacks, and one Hispanic. After my first term in office, I ran and successfully won my second term as the mayor of Chicago on April 7, 1987. I was beginning to win many of the people who opposed me during much of my first term. I had support among many of the ethnic and religious communities that make up Chicago. Chinese, Hispanic, Polish, German, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish. I was ready to implement new initiatives that would advance my beloved city. But then, six months into my term on November 25th, 1987, at this very desk, are predicting a complex and stormy transition of power. There was no Prince of Wales. There isn't a designated person who uh, Washington deemed to be his successor. That's one really critical issue. Today, a political power at Chicago City Hall has passed. Harold Washington, the man who had hoped to be remembered as one mayor who stood up to the Democratic machine. Question of a legacy. Just what did Harold Washington want to leave behind? Obviously, he had no idea that death was imminent, literally days away. But he had also obviously given the question some thought. We now leave you with his thoughts. The trouble with Chicago, it is retarded. Other cities have moved away from us. Our legacy is one of clout. And we still think of it. And it's killing us. We've got to get away from it. We've got to stop imposing that kind of a truncated thinking on the leaders. This leader's not going to buy it because he knows that's not the way to run things. But that is the way to do it uh, through that process. Look at the, at the educational summit. Watch as this whole 
parent council matter unfolds and you will see my idea about how cities should be run in terms of solving serious problems. That's the legacy I want to leave. It goes without saying I want open government, I want institutions that work, I want people to come and get work cooperatively and interdependently with each other and all those kinds of things. But fundamentally and basically, you've got to get people into a, an idea of working together through an ordered system of give and take. He brought them into the process this year, like I said. Yes. You know, all sorts of rumors from conspiracy theorists had people believing that I was poisoned. However, autopsy reports revealed that my untimely death was from a massive heart attack. Though I have been gone for more than 20 years now, the city of Chicago has made many strides forward. Several of my initiatives and plans to bring communities together have succeeded. In my honor, there are several buildings around the city that bear my name. And those who remember me will still believe that I had a tremendous impact on Chicago. But I will admit I do miss my birds. Yeah, my birds. If it's a spring or summer day when you leave the museum, look up at the trees in Washington Park Amen. and say hello to my green feathered friend. Goodbye for now.